Hello, hello everybody. Uh, so, this is uh, the second video about artificial general intelligence and how maybe we can achieve it. So, I'm Mario Lustosa. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the understanding approach to AGI. And it's understanding uh, currently it's uh, versus it's pattern recognition versus understanding. So as I follow, as I see it, the neural networks, they work mainly with pattern recognition. And I'd like to focus on what the distinction between pattern recognition and actual understanding and think thinking. And I'm, I'm also going to talk about uh, brute force uh, and infinite models that you need to train versus one core algorithm. Uh, and the uh, semant semantic connections versus weights adjustments, right? So, quick introduction, I'm Mario Lustosa, and I, I'm the CEO of a company. We develop apps that work with artificial intelligence. My background, uh, academic background, is in biology. So, I am interested in both fields, and I'd like to contribute a little bit, uh, try to contribute, try to help you know uh, in the in the in the search for AGI and I invite you to uh, comment below let's have a conversation give me your send me your ideas or make a videos uh, a video about your ideas and let me know because I'd like to have new ideas not just see how the uh, neural nets work or how GPT-3 works but actually can we think about new ideas this is an attempt okay so uh, let's see, I'd like to, like I said in the first video, if you haven't seen the first video, I'm going to put a link below where I introduce some of the ideas and, and, and the goal and my, uh, some of my ideas. So one of my main ideas is, to, is that we, I think we need to change from pattern recognition, not change, use pattern recognition but go deeper into understanding. As far as I'm aware, uh, computers, neural nets, they don't understand anything ex exactly. So they, they sort of, uh, they can recognize patterns after they're trained with brute force, with millions of examples. Then they feel, uh, they adjust the weights of these uh, artificial neurons and they say, oh, it's a cat. But uh, so it's all, uh, you know, it's all like uh, uh, code, a computer code, and no semantic, no real thinking. Okay, so let's see. Pattern recognition versus understanding. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, current net neural nets, they 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 have one, they have the ability to be trained with millions of examples, and then. Uh, recognize a, a photo for example uh, an image or an animal and that's that's great that's important and th this exists in the brain as far as I'm aware where there are layers of neurons that recognize corners and shapes and co colors and all kinds of things and then they say okay cat right so recognizing things and recognizing patterns is one part of it one important part which uh, you know, uh, uh, scientists, uh, programmers, amazingly, uh, they have uh, arrived at this capability of pattern recognition. It's, it's, they're getting better and better at it. But this is only a tiny fraction of what the brain does and what intelligence is, right? So, uh, so what do I think needs to happen? So if you, if you look at this drawing, please forgive my weird uh, sketch here. Um, but this is supposed to be two neural nets, right? And suppose this is recognizing cats and this is recognizing, I don't know, something else. Uh, like, I don't know, fur, the fur of the, of the cat, the fur in the skin of the cat, right? Or cat ears or whatever. Or, 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 or a zoo, it doesn't matter. The, the, the important thing here is this. Uh, we're, this is what we're doing currently, right? We do this, 
someone else does this, right? And these are two different neural nets that are trained by different teams, let's suppose. Uh, or two neural nets by the same team. But here's the thing. Once we arrive at a, at a, at a, at a concept, at a, at a pattern, at, a, at a, something that is recognized, a pattern, a concept, like a cat, or a car, or a building, this neural net was trained to, to, to recognize a cat. So once this happens here, and suppose there's another neural net that is recognizing something else, right? Now, this concept here, it needs to be interconnected to some other concept that was recognized by probably another neural net, right? So our, to the, to today, as far as I'm aware, neural nets end here, right? And then from here, they may, they may have an action, like move left, move right, you know, uh, approach the cat or get away from the cat, whatever. So from here on, there's only action. Like we, we recognize this, what do we do now? We recognize this cat, show the word cat to the user of the computer, something like that. Now, I don't think we should stop here, right? I think we should go now to another level uh, which, which happens in the brain, right? The concepts go from pattern recognition into, and then this is the semantic layer, right? Uh, the semantic layer. So the, here's a concept, here's another concept, here's another concept, here's another concept. Each one of these might be being recognized by different, suppose, smaller neural nets or whatever. But then you have a, a, a real network, right? Uh, a semantic network, right? That in which the concepts that are arriving from the perception, let's say this is the perception, and then we arrive at concepts, and then we need to link them up semantically, not just link them up randomly, but link them, find a way to link them semantically in a way that makes things make sense, right? So. This is complex, but just to put it simply, very simplistically, let's suppose this is cat, like I said, this is cat, and this is the word, uh, the word cat. The, the, the image of the cat, this is the word cat. This is a zoo, this is fur, this is, I don't know, uh, the, the cat owner, this is cat food, uh, whatever, whatever, right? But, but the point is, uh, this mesh, this network, needs to be interconnected in a way in which things are connected in, in, in a way that, that they make sense, right? So, uh, why do I think this is important? So, either you have something that makes sense semantically, or you always need infinite models and brute force. Why? Each new thing that you're trying to do or recognize is going to have is, it's, is going to have to be trained with millions or billions of models, right? Brute force. And then when you, when you say, oh, I don't want to recognize cats anymore. I want to recognize, I don't know, songs uh, or a specific song or another animal or a car or a street sign. And then you need another neural net. And these neural nets need to be trained with billions of examples. And then it doesn't matter how many times you do this because you're only getting good at pattern recognition. You're never leaving pattern recognition, right? So when, and, and none, of, none of this makes sense in, in any way. It's, you're just saying, it, it makes sense in the sense of recognizing patterns. But you have, I suppose you agree with me that recognizing patterns is not the end all, end all, be all of intelligence, right? So in order, we need this so that we can, so that we will not need brute force and infinite models and infinite training uh, and, 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 and things that don't make sense, right? So how, what do we do so that we don't need all these models and all these brute force and things start to make sense? We need one uh, core algorithm. We, we may arrive, we may discover, that's how the brain works. No one knows what the, the main algorithm of the brain is or even, or even if it is it's one algorithm or more than one. But I do, uh, I do have some ideas of how maybe 
it, it, it works and I'll talk about it in, in the next few videos. But um, what I mean by this is that you either try to solve, like I said in the first video, you either try to solve millions of problems one by one differently with billions of examples and training for each one of them. And then when you arrive at a solution, you have the, this library of many solutions concerning pattern recognition of things. Or, so you, you either try to solve all the problems in the universe one by one with brute force and a lot of labor and a lot of money to, to buy big computers and, and data and everything. Uh, and this is, has to be done repeatedly, right? It, you can't skip and use this was what was trained to do one thing to do another thing, something else. Or we solve one thing, which is to find one core algorithm of how of how things make sense, right? And 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 in other words, you either f you either solve intelligence, or you have to do this all the time, right? I, I said this in the other video as well. So in other words, it's understanding that is missing. Here, there's no understanding. There's pattern recognition. That's great, but that's just like I don't know, one percent or three percent of of under the whole understanding. When you enter, enter a room and you notice everything that's there, you're recognizing patterns, that's one part of the understanding. But then, what are you doing there? Who's, who's, whose room is that? Why is the bed there? Uh, what do you need to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to sleep? Are you going to go out? You're just recognizing the environment. That's one tiny part of intelligence, right? So, uh, uh, and you may not even know what, uh, what each thing is, is for. You know, so you just, you just train to, you, you see millions of examples of beds and then you say, oh, a bed. That's not intelligence, that's not understanding, okay? So, what do I mean by that? So we need understanding and, and it's amazing because, you know, in a system like the brain or a computer, either everything makes sense, like in the brain, or nothing makes sense. Right? It's, 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 it's a clear cut. It's not, oh, we're working with, with uh, machine learning and neural nets and, and we understand partially things. And we, no, nothing makes sense, right? If it did, the models wouldn't break down every time you, you change a tiny little thing or you try to talk to a computer or whatever. So nothing makes sense for a computer or for a neural net except at this tiny pattern recognition part. And in the brain, everything makes sense. So once the core algorithm is found, everything's going to make sense because everything is going to be interconnected and, and semantically, etc. Right? And then, so and so, we arrive at uh, this part here, which is semantic connections versus weights uh, adjustments. We're almost finishing here. So, uh, you know, not only do we only recognize patterns. But it's, it is, it's also done in a, in a way in which, you know, we're not recognizing because it makes sense to us or, or anything like that or, or because it's connected to something else. It's just trained and then there's weights of adjustments like mathematical numbers and statistics. So no one under understands what's going on. In the, this is like a black box, right? In the neural nets, if it's too big, then no one knows exactly what is, it, what is inside of it. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It's just numbers that are uh, being used to represent weights. You know, it's like votes for certain, certain aspects of, you know. So in other words, uh, we need to go from weights adjustments, you know, and blind, recognition of patterns, right, to cement semantic connections, which is this part. So it's okay that we can do this, this is good, right? This is like, I don't know, 1% of intelligence or less. Now we need to go f further, we need to go beyond. and We get the concept that is recognized by the neural nets, by the many neural nets or whatever, uh, and then we, we, need to, we need to connect them semantically. It needs to make sense, right? So this is the challenge. And I, I'm, of course, I'm gonna talk about more about this part here, which is like another black box. It's a, sort of a mystery, right? But this is a mystery for us in terms of the fact that things don't make sense here semantically, 
But this makes things semantically, but it's a mystery because we don't know exactly how the brain does it, you know? But I'm gonna talk about how I think it maybe does it. And um, so you may consider this and my other video and my next videos like a, like a research paper because I don't like to write research papers very much, send, submit them to research magazines. And I don't know, I'm a little impatient. So I just want to make my research paper in this uh, video format, <laughs> if, you, if you will. Okay. But uh, so there are many, many things. This is a very complicated. We're talking about the brain and intelligence and all that. I want to talk about the difference between a computer and, a, and the brain philosophically, you know, scientifically. Yeah. And uh, I want to talk about language. Language is a very important aspect. I want to talk about many things. And so this is only my second video. And I, 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 I would like to invite you to comment below, send me a message you know, DM, let's have a conversation, ask me things, I'll, I'll try to answer. Let's try to solve this together, right? I mean, at least uh, uh, contribute. Let's try to contribute, contribute to the search of, uh, for artificial general intelligence, right? And like I said in the other video, you don't need to be NASA or the US government or, or Google to solve AGI. In my opinion, you don't need to be. It's better if you are, <laughs> but if you aren't, you don't need to be because I think there may be a way to, to start doing small projects, small examples that will show semantics, will show a tiny bit of intelligence. And then this can be scaled millions of times and then this may be interesting, right? So let's try to do this. Uh, I had some comments in the other, the first video and uh, I'd like to, to say that um, somebody asked me, how can we, uh, try to uh, explain this by uh, if we don't understand the brain, for example, was one uh, a, a question. So that's why I, I, you know, I like neuroscience, and we can we study neuroscience, uh, have uh, 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 thought experiments, etc., and try to figure out what intelligence is and and how the brain works and how intelligence may work, right? And um, so there were other questions and I'll answer them in the next videos because it's a little longer, a little long. But if you'd like to see more videos, please comment below, uh, you know, share. Uh, I'd really like to know your ideas and, uh, and, 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 I'll, and I'll go into more details about this in the next video and other aspects. Uh, so it's, it's a very com complicated concept. So in one video it's difficult to, to encompass everything, right? Check out my first video and soon I'll post the next video, okay? See you guys, thank you, bye bye.